you know, I wrote about this in a book that um, I published some years ago, and it's, it's, it's really a, a story about my father, um, who raised me. My mother died when I was quite young, and, and um, it was my father who almost single-handedly is really responsible for um, everything that I understand about parental engagement. Um, he was a, a custodian. Um, he played music uh, in New York City um, in his off time, and, uh, but largely was a guy who wanted his son to go to college. Uh, didn't know how to do it. Didn't have the slightest clue about SAT and PSAT and all the necessary steps that one takes or courses you need to take. All he knew was that from where we lived in New York to, uh, to the college front door, there had to be a road. And he trusted his own instinct about what that road meant um, and where it would lead. Um, and so what I recall about this was being told in a guidance office at one point in time that you know, your, your son, Mr. Crew, is just not eligible for college. He hasn't taken the right English classes. He hasn't taken the right math classes. Um, his grades are not that, that strong. Um, you know, he's, he's missed a number of days and so on and so forth. And so even though at the time I was, you know, uh, more desirous of playing sports, um, my father kept saying, you know, I don't know what else he needs to do, uh, uh, Miss School Person, but I, I just know he's going to college. And the purpose of my conversation with you is to figure out what is it that he needs to do starting today as he enters the ninth grade in this high school, what does it need to do in order to be able to go to college? And she again repeated, well, you know, he, he's, he's just not going to be th that uh, successful in college, you know, because he just doesn't have the, the, the grades coming into high school. I didn't take the necessary courses uh, and so forth. And all I remember was my father taking a very deep voice, uh, taking a very deep breath and saying, you know, I, I don't really want to start any problems here. I just want to know what it is that he has to take. Now, if it's mathematics, you just need to put him in the same class as everybody else who's going to college. I don't know exactly what those courses are called, but I want him in those classes. I'll take care of the rest. If it's something to do with English or if he has to take a, a foreign language, you put him in those classes because I'll make sure he gets what he needs to study and do his homework so he'll be successful in those classes. And I remember looking at my father and feeling actually a, a little afraid that he was making a bet that I wouldn't be able to keep, but actually feeling pretty proud that here's somebody that I love very much who's expressing his belief in this big institution um, so profoundly even if he doesn't have all the accoutrements, he doesn't have a suit and a tie, and he's not, you know, conversant in knowing all the things you need and letters and the acronyms and so forth. All I knew was he just, there was a man who believed in me. And his belief in me, both then and even now, his belief in me is what got translated to me being willing to say, yeah, I I, I do want to do this. It confirms it that I do want to do it. I'm not sure I even know how to do it. He doesn't know how to do it. So we have to have a partnership with this school. And it starts with my father saying to this person, he's going to be put in these classes. Everybody else gets put in these classes. Those are the kids who go to college. I want my son in it. So it was his advocacy. It was his certainty that made it possible for me to think about and hear out loud that this was the norm. This was what was going to happen. And that the job now, the work to be done, was for me to figure out how to make sure all of it got done. Homework assignments, uh, tests, uh, quizzes, uh, preparation for uh, oral language, uh, Spanish, I spoke Spanish, uh, speaking, uh, you know, all the quizzes and the, and the uh, the debates that had to be done in Spanish and so on and so forth. All of that was on my end. On his end, it was, he, 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 he laid the predicate. 
You know, he just laid the groundwork. Study, come home, you got a few hours, do your homework in those hours, no, t no TV. Um, let me keep your confidence up. Let me ask about your work. Let me see it. Now, this is the man who had a third grade education. So him seeing my math assignment really didn't say he was able to correct it. It was saying, I just care about you getting it done. I just care about the fact that this is what you are doing. This is your job right now. You're old enough to have a job. This is the job I want you to have in my house. And it was so clear to me that there was a partnership that I had in my responsibility, his responsibility, and frankly, the school's responsibility. And it was nothing for me to, over time, you know, sort of say out loud, this is what I did. You know, here's the, here's the, here's the report card that I got. And I remember bringing a report card in and my father looking at it and saying to me, now, son, what are these uh, C's here for? What does that mean? And I said, well, Dad, you know, you can get an A through an F, and a C is kind of right at the, at the, 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 the average, really. It's, it's sort of best I could do in that class, Pop. And he said to me, he said, well, now, what is an A? What does an A mean? He said, well, an A is a, I, I said, the A is, a, is the best grade I can get. I mean, that, that's top of the class. That's the best grade you can possibly get in this class. He said, well, now, <clears throat> what is it that you would have to do to get an A. So, well, I got to study more. I got to be able to get a few fewer answers wrong on the tests, um, have to speak up more in class, and so on and so forth. He said, well, then, that's what you're doing. <laughs> that's what you're doing the next time. He said, I, I, I understand you can get a C, and I understand that maybe is the way you can pass, but if it's possible to get an A, then you need to get an A. Now, my, I, I, I don't suggest that everybody's got to get an A all the time. What I suggest is that you've got to try your hardest. That's all he was really saying in this. But that's a parent's role to have those expectations. That's a teacher's role to have those expectations, that we actually can be A's, right? And if you fall short of that, well, then try again the next time. But the idea is it's a culture of effort. It's a culture of, of commitment. And it starts at home. It really starts at home. It starts with love and caring and affection and a set of high expectations that get committed and talked about and articulated between parent and child. It's a way of being able to continue that even as young people get older. And it's a way of being able to manifest it at times when you've lost faith yourself as a student. And so parents are always going to be in this equation. And the real question is how we as a school or a school institution, how we then use that capital, use that knowledge in helping to make this partnership work for the outcomes of this kid. That's the deal. That's the deal.